All right, so here's our here's our new one. So we're in the second part of six seven. We've been looking at these polynomials bigger than just squared terms. We're looking at x to the third, x to the fourth, larger degrees, and basically kind of factoring them down to find the zeros. Well, today we're going to go the opposite direction. We're going to be given the answers. We're going to be giving our zeros or our x-intercepts. And now it's going to be our job to create the original problem. So we can go both directions. Sort of like when you boil something out and then you factor it. Same difference is going on here. So here's how this is going to work. When you're trying to write these, when they give you the zeros, what you have to do is switch the signs. and create binomials. Now let me explain what I mean by that. Before, when we were doing synthetic division, okay, we were given zeros, we'd put those in the box. So if I were to sort of sneak back down here, okay, when I had the zeros available, I used those values here. But when I'm trying to write the polynomial, it's like when we were doing the synthetic division and you were given x plus 2 and then we'd use, you know, minus 2. Or x minus 3 and we'd use positive 3 in the box. So what I'm going to do here, since I see three zeros, I'm going to make three sets of parentheses. They're each going to be a binomial term. And then I'm basically going to start at the beginning and go, okay, so x, the opposite of positive 2 would be minus 2. The opposite of 1 would be minus 1. The opposite of 4 would be minus 4. And my job is going to be to multiply this out. So we've done stuff like this before, actually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pair these off. And it doesn't matter which pair you would do first. And again, whether you foil, whether you box, however you happen to do it, that's how we're going to work these out. So, for instance, here, and if some of you need to do some boxing along the edge here, that's okay. But again, if I multiply this out, I get x squared minus x minus 2x plus 2. And then, of course, I want to combine my like terms. Now, again, that's not the entire problem. I'm not quite done yet because I still haven't used, in my case, I haven't used the x minus 4 yet. So when I get to here, again, you have choices. You can just distribute through if you would like. That's an option, because some of you have said, I really don't like the whole box thing. Okay. Some of you are like, ooh, I wouldn't want to do anything but that, because it organizes everything for me. So we'll do a little of everything here. Since we kind of foiled or just distributed here, I will show off the box one last time here, just in case some of you. I'm still doing the same thing. Basically, I'm just multiplying my terms together. The box just kind of organizes my terms for me and lets me see a little bit easier where my like terms are going to be. I still have to be careful, though. Still remember, when you're multiplying, you have to add your exponents, just like you have to pass. And like I said, the nice thing about the box is I'm just multiplying my sides together. Is that it's a little easier for me to catch if I happen to make a mistake. Because like for instance, if I had x here and this is x squared, it's like, wait a minute, the diagonals are supposed to have like terms. Why isn't that occurring here? So that's one of the reasons I actually like this a little bit. But my largest degree will always be in the upper left corner. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way down. Again, once the box is filled, I'm just combining like terms. No more messing with exponents. 12 and 2 get 14x minus 8. So this was the initial polynomial that I started with. And the nice, that's the answer. So the nice thing about this is, I can make sure that I'm right. Okay? The calculator won't do the problem for me from start to end, but if I were to take my new polynomial, so x to the third 
minus 7x squared, 14x minus 8, and graph it, I should be able to see, if I get my window back to normal here, that the zeros go through the places I need. Now, I personally can see that it's in the right spot. But again, I could always hit second and graph to get the table and notice where my zeros end up. One, two, and four, just like they were supposed to. So this is my way of sort of doing a double check on these if I wanted to, to make sure I've done things right, if I have any doubt. I can always just plug that in and see how that's going to work out for me. So it's this, actually the same thing going on six. No twist here right away. What are my three sets of parentheses, my three binomials going to look like for number six? Right. They're all going to be plus this time. X plus two, X plus four, X plus seven. Same concept though. Take a pair of them, boil them, multiply them out. If some of you can knock out all the combining like terms at the same time here with that first pair, that's good. If not, what we're doing here is A-OK. -okay. Then again, I'm just going to combo that up with the last binomial that I have. And again, there's not a right or wrong method on these. If you're more comfortable with distributing, you can do that. I've seen some teachers will line each one up, you know, combine like terms down. That's good, too. Just kind of a personal preference type of thing. Again, multiply, watch your exponent. And the twists are coming at the bottom, but you know, I'll be honest, they're not even bad ones. With some of the twists that we've dealt with before, you're going to be like, oh, that's not anything too strange. So again, nice thing about this, start with my largest degree term. The diagonals are going to have my like terms in them. And again, if I wanted to, I could type that into my calculator and take a look at my chart. And when I look at x equals negative 2, negative 4, and negative 7, I should see zeros if I've done things right. But as was mentioned, of course, there's a twist to things. Sometimes, we, as we saw yesterday, you're going to have some imaginary solutions. I even get a fractional one here and there. But the imaginary is the one that's a little bit trickier. So here's how this works. And I'll try to put what I wrote here in the parentheses into English a little bit. Okay, zeros of h and i. Note, imaginary solutions come in complex conjugate pairs. Ooh, you want to sound really fancy. Go tell somebody that. We were working with complex conjugate pairs in class today. Here's what that means simply. If you have a zero that's i, it means if I have i, I'm also going to have negative i as a zero. Or like in number eight, it talks about negative five and two i. So if I have two i, it means I'm going to have negative two i. And that works both ways. So if they just said my zeros were eight and negative i, it would be negative i and positive i. Okay? It just means Whenever you see I, there's two there. You may not be told that right away. So if you're not told, make a note of that. So here's how that'll work. My zeros still going to work the same way. Still going to have x minus 8, my opposite sign. But I now know that I'm going to have I and negative I. So I have x minus I and x plus I. So again, I'm changing signs on those. So if I has been giving you an issue, we're going to have to kind of re revisit some of that here for a second. So when I go to do this, personally, I want to deal with all the I's at once. So we're going to take this second pair on first. When you're doing this, things to be cautious of. So x times x, okay, so that's x 
squared. X times I is positive X I. I've got a negative X I and a negative I squared. So, a couple things to make mention of. First, I'm fortunate. Positive and negative x i cancel each other, so I'm not really worried about that. What's i squared equal? Negative 1. Right. So since x, since x squared, oh my goodness. Since i squared equals negative 1, that's what's getting replaced right here. So it was just mentioned then that this is really x squared minus negative 1, which is x squared plus 1. So there's a lot of little detail things that can get you if you aren't being careful. Okay? But anytime you see i squared, that's going to take care of this. And that's also why we put those in pairs, because we don't want i sitting in the middle of our problem. So that's my multiplied out x minus i, x plus i. Yeah, if I did the box with that, the same exact thing would happen. And actually, on the next one, I'll do it that way. So then now here, again, I can distribute, or I can box it. Again, some of you are like this box thing. Boxes are interchangeable. They can be any size I want them to be. If you're comfortable just foiling here, again, go ahead and do that. I'm going to do is multiply to fill my box in. And then let's see what I get here. X to the third. Yep, we got an X squared here. Now, again, this one won't be quite as nice if you tried to check into the calculator because the only zero you're going to see is the 8. Again, we don't see the imaginary ones on the calculator. So, Something that we want to keep in mind. But again, whenever you're dealing with that I, the biggest thing to remember is I'm always going to have a plus and a minus with that. And I always want to deal with my I's first. So if I decided I was going to box these, okay, I'm going to get the same thing as if I foiled or what I did down here. So if I went a boxing with these two, so x minus 2i, x plus 2i, fill in my boxes. Again, there's advantages to every way that you do it, but here I'm like, okay, x squared, these two boxes cancel, a positive and a negative 2ix, or 2xi. But then I remember, i squared is negative 1. So this is really negative 4 times negative 1, which is positive 4. So this whole thing is x squared plus 4. But I still have to multiply it times the x plus 5. And again, I could box this up again if I wanted to, or some of you I know are more comfortable just saying, okay, so first I got x squared times x is x to the third, and I got a positive 5x squared, a positive 4i, and a positive 20, and I'm done that way. So again, even in this section, I mean, that, there's a lot of stuff. I mean, we've played with long division, we've played with synthetic division, we've had the zeros given to us, we've had to find the zeros, and now we're writing the polynomial. Lots of stuff going on here. But it's not bad, right. It's nothing that's bad, it's just keeping everything straight. So, yeah, if 